Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa maulana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in All praise, thanks and gratitude is due to Allah, Lord of the Universe Our mercy, blessing, salutations, love and compassion on our beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam his family and friends and those who follow in their guidance until the day of judgment. Beloved brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Last week, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we spoke about why would somebody study or learn about the biography of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It is basically incumbent on all of us to understand the lifestyle of the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that we can become better human beings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this earth so that we can learn and emulate our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we said, it is one thing good enough to celebrate his birth, but it's more important that we celebrate his lifestyle throughout our lives and that gives us an indication of how much we truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam we started off by saying that the Prophet peace be upon him made a declaration by stating to the world what was the main reason for his mission and that is إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِيُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ that Allah has sent me to complete or to complete the sublime character and that is character of the human being. In that statement, it is also coupled وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ But some people have the opinion that the most important part of the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to perform their salah, to give zakah, to fast the month of Ramadan and to perform hajj. Yes, that is the principles of Islam. But also, through every single principle, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it compulsory, there is a development, the development of your character. In other words, if the waqt, if the time of ibadah is a compulsory act, then that means the development of your character becomes compulsory. And through every single ibadah, for salah, we have discussed that last week, alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the salah from the certain categories mentioned in the hadith that we have mentioned last week. And we said this week, inshallah, we look at siyam. What does siyam do for a person? It is not just the abstinence of food and drink and sexual intercourse during the course of the day. It is not that. It is the development of the self-discipline during the month of Ramadan. A person fasts for how many, for how many years in his life? Let's say 30 years for that, for example. 30 months of his life, he's been fasting for 29 or 30 days. From the morning till the evening, from sunrise to sunset. What did you really learn? How did you transform yourself during that period? Yet, the objective of fasting was not just the abstinence. It was in to be in control of yourself, the self-discipline. The self-transformation that takes place during the month of Ramadan. And it is not just one day. It is the rigorous training for 30 days or 29 days continuously, day after day. You go through that rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command that you have to stay without food, stay without drink. But also in the same time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of the one who does not abstain from vain talk or vain deeds during the time while he is fasting or during the month of Ramadan. What does that mean? That means it is not just the abstinence from food and drink or sexual intercourse. It is the abstinence from everything that is not beautiful in your character, the way you speak, how you control your speech, how you control yourself in your behavior towards others. You know, if we look at sports, for instance, you get sometimes a harsher punishment 
for the one who retaliates. The one who retaliates, the one who commits the foul, he gets a yellow card. The one who retaliates gets a red card. Why? Because the retaliation is actually worse. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, while you are fasting, don't retaliate. Where does that come from? Prophet ﷺ says, فَإِنْسَابَهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ You are fasting. During the month of Ramadan, somebody comes. They want to pick a fight with you. They're swearing at you. They're verbally abusing you. And they want to pick a fight physically. What is your duty? Must you retaliate? Rasulullah says, no, no, don't retaliate. For in Sabah, look the wording that the Prophet chose. If somebody swears or verbally abuse you, qatalahu, and he wants to physically pick a fight with you, what must you do? Qul inni sahim. You just tell him politely, I am fasting. Say it loud so he can hear. You can also hear. Make yourself aware of the fact that you are fasting. You are in act of ibadah. You are in, in act of worship. You are in the process of disciplining yourself. And that is why you are in control of your anger. This is what fasting is about. Not just staying. Staying without food and water. People die today and they say without food and water. And they say we're going to die. There's a major difference between dieting and fasting. That's self-discipline that comes through fasting is teaching us how to be good human beings. Transform yourself for 30 days, rigorous training. So when you come out of that month of Ramadan, you're a different person. You should be. I imagine for 30 years you've been doing it. Now, I can't understand, you know, and, and some people that, 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 that are smokers, they say, you keep on hopping on the smokers. I said, fine, okay. You don't smoke from the morning till the evening and the moment the other hand goes tonight, you pick up your cigarette and you start smoking again. Why? The whole day you was held from it. Why can't you do it at night? Why can't you do it tomorrow? And just train yourself and, and slowly just remove from your system that toxic that's going into it. And, and at the end of the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, you would have given up smoking for the sake of Allah. For the sake of, for the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is so beautiful. This is Ramadan. This is the month of Ramadan, what it can bring. There is so much more. There is a sadaqat. You give sadaqah. It is not just a matter of putting your hand in your pocket and giving charity. No. When you look at the, the very purpose of zakah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it sadaqah in the Quran. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا Take from them the compulsory zakah, and that is a means of purification and sanctification as well. تُطَهِّرُهُمْ That is purification. What was a kihim is sanctification. What is sanctification? It means that you are giving sadaqat and you learn how to sanctify yourself and to bring yourself to the level of a person that you are giving to, that Allah has blessed you to give to that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you and so you learn compassion. You learn generosity. You learn kindness. You learn how to treat people with respect and dignity. And whenever somebody is in difficulty, you say, let me take this person out of difficulty because Allah can take me out of difficulty the day of Qiyamah, inshallah. That is the purpose. It is not just a matter of, oh, I have to give my 2.5% zakah. Alhamdulillah, I've given my zakah and that's it. Or I've given it to somebody to give my zakah. No, it must come from within. It must come from the heart. And you must learn the ibadah of satisfaction. What is the ibadah of satisfaction? It's called ibadatul rida. Ibadatul rida is when you do something for the satisfaction of Allah that you find that self-satisfaction within yourself. That I am satisfied to do this and so you will become a satisfied human being with what Allah has prescribed for you. That is important. We learn tazkiyah. We learn tazkir from our sadaqat. You go on hajj for instance. Hajj. You can't just go on hajj and come back and you're either the same person or you've been worse. No. When you go on hajj, you must come back a better person, a better human being. Why do we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has not asked us South Africans, you South Africans, you're going to go um, in the month of Muharram, you're going for hajj. Egyptians, you're going to go in the month of Safar for hajj. Yemenis, you're going to go in a different month for hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed hajj in a certain period of time 
on a certain place and that is where all must come together in unison. No matter your diversity, you will all come together and that millions of people that are there together, you will learn how to coexist with all of them. With the different nationalities, the different traditions, the different way of life, but you will learn. And that is why being in Ihram, being in Ihram, with all its restrictions that goes with it, it is a form of disciplining your character. No amorous talk with your wife. She's halal to you, but you're in ihram, you can't. You have to abstain. You are in ihram, you can't fight. You can't, you can't uh, slander. You can't talk about people. You can't gossip. All those things. Restraining yourself. The same with Ramadan. Restraining yourself. This is what our deen is about. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I came to perfect the most sublime character. So some people think, yes, you know, making ibadah and going for hajj ten times and going for umrah and, and, and see, making siyam the whole year, that it is all well and good. But if it does not impact on your life and it does not help you to transform yourself, then of what benefit was it? The salah didn't forbid you from doing anything wrong. That would be the very first objective. And if you, if you look at the Holy Quran, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam on his tongue, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, that, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ كِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam talks about sending us a rasul that will read or rehearse the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people, meaning the Quran, and to teach them, to give them knowledge, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ and wisdom, and to purify them. This was on the tongue of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But four times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorically mentions this particular ayah. And the point that I'm making here is, when it comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not on the tongue of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, but directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the tazkiyah comes first before the knowledge and the wisdom and reading of the verses. And the tazkiyah means the purification of the personality of the human being, your character, your akhlaq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put this categorically first before you get your knowledge even that your character must be right. And if you look at the second goal, why we would actually study the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's very important. Because the way people think today, unfortunately, is that we have a religion called the deen of Islam inside the house of Allah. Outside is a different religion. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong. For some people, this is the place we must behave, we must dress, we must be clean, we must do everything right. But the moment we step outside that door, it's a different religion. That Rasulullah came to teach us. If you study the seerah of the Prophet, the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you will find Islam is a whole, it's holistic. It is, there is no Islam inside the house and Islam outside the house. There is no Islam inside the masjid and Islam outside the masjid. This, it's not two different, it's, it's one deen. It's one holistic deen. And we need to accept that. So when we are inside the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I might just drift off the point slightly here, as much as we care for one another right here where we are inside the masjid, we're keeping our distances, we're keeping our mask on. I'm the only one that's allowed not to wear my mask today. You're not having your mask on. You care for one another and the same care you must show when you are outside that door of the masjid. So when I ask people not to congregate and to hug and to, and to kiss people outside the masjid, then I am only doing it because we care for one another and we show that respect and dignity towards one another. As much as I care for my life, I care for your life as well. And this is what Rasulullah came to teach us. He came to teach us that we must not have that dichotomy. We must not have the differences for one and the difference for the other. MashaAllah, the hijab is being worn inside the masjid. Outside the masjid, take the hijab off. It's fine. We don't have to wear it. 
When we go to a janaza, certain dress code. But when we go out uh, away from the janaza, the dress code is dropped. That is so important. Your behavior, your character, our whole deen, our whole deen is based on character and ibadah. You look at Surah Al-Mu'minun, for instance. The beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breaks up these verses. One is to do with ibadah, one is character. The next verse, ibadah, the next verse, character. If you look at Surah Al-Furqan, for instance, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هُونَ وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا السَّلَامَ One is ibadah, one is character. One is character, one is ibadah. They are all entwined. Your ibadah and your character is entwined. But your character comes first. You cannot be, you cannot be a person who has, who think he has good Islam and just make ibadah, but his character is of the worst. When he speaks, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Then you have a person who speaks well and his character is beautiful, but he has no ibadah. Both these categories are not accepted in Islam. You need to have both that goes together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that, insha'Allah. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. I swear by Allah, you are not a true believer. And he repeated that thrice. This is Qalu, Man Ya Rasulullah. Who is it that is not a true believer? Prophet didn't say he is not a believer. He is not a true believer. Man la ya'manu jarahu bawa'iqahu. Who cannot guarantee his neighbor from a verbal abuse. His neighbor. You're not supposed to verbally abuse even your neighbor. If you do that on a regular basis, then you are not a true believer, says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So the second goal and objective for any human being studying the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to understand that we are one holistic, we have one holistic religion and we need to practice it as such. We cannot have one religion for being here and another religion for being there. When we go to the mall, we have another religion. When we go somewhere to the beach, we have another religion. When we go on a holiday, it's another religion. My dear brothers and sisters, you're Muslim first and you're Muslim last. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all those that are sick their health and strength insha'Allah and for all those that have passed on may Allah grant them a high place in paradise insha'Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the health and strength to be able to fulfill our duties towards Allah and towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly allow me to say that we have reached a point alhamdulillah where from the 1st of December, that will be on Wednesday, insha'Allah, we will be making salah upstairs. Um, upstairs at the back there, we will be performing our regular daily salahs upstairs, insha'Allah. Um, that being said, still all COVID-19 protocols will have to be observed. And I mean, please, my dear brothers and sisters, strictly observed. Strictly, we have seen, we have heard so many masajid, has have closed the doors again. Why? Because there's another spike happening. We do not, as Muslims, who's been afforded the freedom to come back to our masajid, we do not want to be the cause to say that the Muslim houses of worship, the mosques, have become the hubs where coronavirus is being spread. We don't want that to happen. So we ask you, please, and we beg of you, my dear brothers, with all humbleness and respect, to think not just about yourself, but to think about the others around you. And that is part of our relationship that we have with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To respect the life and honor and dignity of everyone. That is number one. Number two, we have to make dua for one of our old trustees that normally would sit there at the back. Uncle Ismail, who knows from, he is here from um, Woodstock, we all know him the father of Dr. Ismail. He's been in hospital for a while and uh, um, I hope, inshallah, he'll be discharged today. He's not doing too well. We make dua for him for his health and strength, inshallah. Then also, Sister Maryam Valley, who is also is the wife of the late treasurer of the masjid, she has, uh, she's not doing too well. I've just spoken to her son now as I came in and 
He says she's doing much better, alhamdulillah, with our du'as. Let's keep on making du'a for them, insha'Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them complete shifa, insha'Allah. And then there's also the wife of the late uh, um, Mr. Musa, who was also one of the trustees of the masjid. She also had stents put in. We make du'a for her as well. And Allah grant her complete shifa, insha'Allah. Now, we are urging people, when you do come to the masjid, I know sometimes people might have a slight problem, whether it is a chesty problem or breathing problem, and they don't like to keep their noses covered. And they can't do that. But we ask you, for the duration that you are in the masjid, that you do that, you cover your mouth and your nose, and also try and come with your socks on, please. Okay? We are asking you nicely, we're begging of you to please do that for us. To respect the COVID-19 principles, and also let us not be of those who tomorrow we say, oh, but we, some people have passed tested positive, and we have to close our doors again. We don't want that to happen. We would like to keep our doors open. And for those that are standing outside, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, soon, inshallah, we'll be able to open our doors and you'll be able to all come inside. But for now, we have to keep on respecting the protocols, inshallah. So we make dua for our brother that has passed away, Gaf Khan, he has passed on, and we know that he was very much instrumental in the very beginning of the restructuring of the mosque and, and the renovations of the mosque. One of the, the people who, who, who was instrumental in Azrin building the f first new houses here in District 6, he passed away yesterday. We make dua that Allah grant him a high place in Jannah, inshallah, and sabr to his family. And for all those that are suffering, and especially our, our respected Halim, our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels, who is also tested positive. We ask Allah to grant him shifa, insha'Allah. His wife is in hospital. We make dua for her, insha'Allah. And Allah grant her complete shifa, insha'Allah. And make it easy on everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And let us also do our bit to keep ourselves protected, insha'Allah. Wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Long hook, long Alhamdulillah. <laughs> فإن سابه أحد أو قاتله 
فليقل إني مرؤ صائم إني مرؤ صائم ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تبسمك في وجه أخيك لك صدقة وأمرك بالمعروف ونهيك عن المنكر صدقة وإرشاد الرجل في أرض الضلال لك صدقة وإفراغ الضل وإفراغك في دلوك في دلو أخيك لك صدقة وإماطة الأذى عن الطريق لك صدقة وبصرك للرجل الرجيء للرجل الرجيء البصر لك صدقة وأعظم الصدقة لقمة يضعها الرجل في فم زوجته أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر دفعني الله وإياكم من القرآن الكريم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله كما يجب علينا من حمده وتعظيمه ونشكره سبحانه على إحسانه وإنعامه وتكريمه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن نزغات الشيطان وتوهيمه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى وأطيعوه فإن طاعته أقوى وأقوى وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واحذروا أسباب سخط الجبار فإن أجسامكم على النار لا تقوى ثم اعلموا أن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد قال في كتابه العزيز إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد صاحب الوجه الأنور والجبين الأزهر وارض اللهم عن أصحابي أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين واجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وصائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا واصلح إمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء إذ القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر